On the death of Menrepta, his son succeeded him, Seti II, sometimes described or uh, called Seti II Menrepta. He ruled Egypt from 1203 um, BCE to 1197 BCE, a period of six years. So he must have been in senior years when he came to the throne. He lived at the capital, uh, which was in the north now, at Par Ramesses, the house of Ramesses, built by Ramesses II. His chief wife was Queen Isnafret, and Waset became a religious capital and the place of royal burials. Now the focus was on the north and the declining situation in the Mediterranean basin, especially Canaan, Syria, Near East. You have the movement of people and the collapse of the Bronze Age. Unfortunately for Seti II, he was usurped uh, around about sort of year three or four of his reign to a rival king. This rival king was called Amemesi. He seized control of Waset and Kush. He took the ethnic title of ruler of Waset and Amemesi ruled uh, 1201 BCE to 1298 BCE, so three or four years. Now this is highly unusual. We don't know the relationship between Amemesi and Seti II. They may have been cousins or half-brothers, we just don't know. Amemensi's mother may have been Takhat, and she was the daughter of Ramesses II, maybe. That could be his royal connection and claim to the throne. Now, work had progressed two or three years earlier on KV-15, which was going to be the royal burial of Seti II. Unfortunately, a Mimensi sent in the workmen to vandalise the tomb and close it down. A Mimensi took control of the workforce of Della Medina. He made an example by killing the chief foreman. Work started by the workers of Della Medina on Amemensi's tomb, which was KV-10. So Amemensi, the usurper, okay, <laughs> we have to make that point, he was a usurper, controlled the area between Waset and Kush. On his death, the high priest of Amun at Karnak was put to death. The viceroy of Kush was put to death. They were his supporters and they paid the price for this usurpation of the royal throne in that part of, uh, of Egypt. Memensi was uh, buried in his tomb at KV-10. So now our attention turns back to Seti II. He's got control of the country. First thing he does is he builds a way station just inside the first pylon at Karnak. So if you have a look at the map of Karnak, we walk back to the first pylon. Those three um, chambers there is a way station for uh, Amun, uh, Konsu and his consul Mut. So those are the way stations. So in there would have been um, blocks of stone to put the bark on so the priest could take a rest as they're going round that open court. That was the purpose of them. They have suffered with damage over the years. You can imagine that when uh, Karnak was abandoned, it was uh, parts of it was used as, as a church. Um, then it was used as living spaces. Um, and then finally you get to the 19th century where there is an effort to conserve this archaeology. So it has suffered a lot of damage, but in the right time of day, when the sun's on, th on those images, they're magnificent. Beautiful bas-relief carved on stone. Well worth a visit. 
He also erected a small obelisk, it's only two, three metres tall, just out the side, the front pylon. It's actually where the uh, boats would have tied up to Karnak. So it's uh, a landing stage, just in front of the landing stage, which was built by one of the Semmesrets in the 12th dynasty. Seti had started the project of having his tomb built in the Valley of Kings at KV15. Um, when Amamensi usurped the throne, we obviously assumed that work stopped and then it resumed once Seti II had taken control of Waset and Kush. Seti II's chief supporter was a chancellor called Bey. He was of Syrian descent and uh, Seti uh, must have relied on his support as an advisor um, to regain control of Waset and Kush because he gave him permission to build two private tombs in the Valley of the Kings. Wow! You know, this is the raw necropolis just for kings, sometimes queens, uh, but for private tombs, for a non-royal person. Wow! He must have really liked this guy in a big way. So Bay built two tombs in the Valley of the Kings, KV13 and KV14. That's the brief summary of uh, Seti II and Amemensi. I've had to include them because Amemensi usurped really three to four years of Seti's reign in uh, Waset and Kush. Um, I'd like to go to Egypt and video tour the um, way station of Seti II and the rest of Karnak, which in my opinion, it has always been a two-day uh, um, trip to go and see everything at Karnak. You can't do Karnak in a day. It's got to be done in two days. To do this, I need funds. Uh, on the next page is the information link to GoFundMe. If you could make a small donation of, say, a pound, that would really kick off the fund. And then sometime I can go to Egypt make the video tour which you can download onto a phone and use as a tour guide sometime in the future because of this COVID-19. Uh, the world's going to be um, pretty locked down for a few years, I think. But sometime in the future, you could download this video tour onto your phone and I would tour you around Karnak and especially the way station of Seti II. Thank you for listening. I hope this has been uh, uh, this information has been useful. Um, I'm going to uh, do another video on the tombs of MMNC and Seti the Second, and I look forward to seeing you real soon. Bye for now.